Please click the like button and subscribe to this channel for more updates. In this module we're going to describe how the nervous system coordinates and regulates feedback mechanism to maintain homeostasis. Let's answer the pretest. Number 1. The nervous system blank. A. Coordinates. B. Regulates. C. Coordinates and regulates. B. Sends a feedback mechanism. Answer. C. Coordinates and regulates. 2. Which is the biggest part of the brain? A. Cerebrum C. Corpus callosum. B. Cerebellum D. Hypothalamus. Answer B. Cerebellum. What are the building blocks of the nervous system? A. Neurons B. Brain tissues. C. Corpuscles D. Axon. Answer. A. Neurons. 4. Which among these movements are voluntary? A. Heartbeat B. Digestion. C. Perspiration B. Walking. Answer. B. Walking. And number 5. Which of the following comprise the peripheral nervous system? A. Brain and spinal cord. B. Nerves and senses. C. Nerves and pain receptors. B. Spinal cord and heart. Answer B. Nerves and senses. Activity number 2. Match the function to corresponding body system. The body is designed in such a way that all the organs and organ systems work together in order to maintain homeostasis. Or maintaining the internal environment in equilibrium. All the organ systems are controlled by the nervous system, while the endocrine system secretes hormones that regulate all the body's activities. The nervous system coordinates and regulates the body's feedback mechanism to maintain homeostasis. It is a highly organized and complex collection of nerves, a collection of neurons, and neurons, a specialized cell that transmit messages to and from the brain and spinal cord to other part of the body. Let's take a look at the different parts and functions of the nerve. The dendrites receive signals from other neurons or from the body and pass those messages along to the cell body. The cell body is the support center of the neuron. If an outgoing message is to be sent away, it passes from the cell body to the axon, which passes those messages away from the cell body to the axon terminal and onto other neurons or other body parts. The myelin sheet is a protective layer around some axons and helps speed up the signal messages. These signal messages travel as electrical signals, and as they reach the end of a neuron, chemicals called neurotransmitters are stimulated. These chemicals travel through the space in between neuron or other body cells called synapses. It is through neurotransmitters that the nervous system can regulate the body's activities. The nervous system is categorized into two. The central nervous system consists of the brain and spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, which is made up of nerves and the sensory organs. In order for us to understand how these two systems work together, to transmit and process sensory information, and then coordinate these the different bodily functions, let's watch the video. The great and mighty nervous system, or the brain as most of us call it. What makes this organ unique is that within it lies the ability for humans to know oneself. This feature distinguishes and sets the human species apart from the rest of creation. This ability is known as consciousness or intelligence. To begin, let's look at the primary function of the nervous system. The basic purpose is to coordinate all of the activities of the body. It enables the body to respond and adapt to changes that occur both inside and outside the body. Now the nervous system is actually split into two parts. The central nervous system, 
and the peripheral nervous system. We'll explore the peripheral later, but first, let's look at the central nervous system. The central nervous system is made up of two major structures, the brain and the spinal cord. As most people know, the brain is found within the cranium or skull, and there are six main sections among other structures within it. These six sections are the cerebrum, cerebellum, diencephalon, the midbrain, pons, and the medulla oblongata. The first section is the cerebrum. This is the largest section. It's divided into two major hemispheres, which are the right and left hemisphere. And the cerebrum is further divided into four lobes. These four lobes are the frontal, the parietal, the temporal, and the occipital. The frontal lobe is primarily responsible for reasoning and thought. The parietal is primarily responsible for integrating sensory information. The temporal is primarily responsible for processing auditory information from the ears. And the occipital is primarily responsible for processing visual information from the eyes. The second section of the brain is the cerebellum. This is the section located in the back of the head below the cerebrum and above the first cervical of the neck. It is responsible for muscle coordination, balance, posture, and muscle tone. The diencephalon section is found between the cerebrum and the midbrain. It contains two structures, the thalamus and the hypothalamus. The thalamus behaves much like a relay station and directs sensory impulses to the cerebrum. And the hypothalamus controls and regulates autonomic nervous system functions such as temperature, appetite, water balance, sleep, and blood vessel constriction and dilation. The hypothalamus also plays a role in the emotions such as anger, fear, pleasure, pain, and affection. The midbrain section is located below the cerebrum at the top of the brainstem. It is responsible for certain eye and auditory reflexes. The pons is located below the midbrain and in the brainstem. It is responsible for certain reflex actions such as chewing, tasting, and saliva production. And the last section is the medulla oblongata. It's the lowest part of the brainstem and it connects with the spinal cord and is responsible for regulating heart and blood vessel function, digestion, respiration, swallowing, coughing, sneezing, and blood pressure. It's also known as the center for respiration. Now that we've covered the brain, let's take a look at the other half of the central nervous system the spinal cord. The spinal cord is the link between the brain and the nerves and the rest of the body. The spinal cord is divided into four different regions. The cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and the afferent and efferent spinal nerves, which merge to form the peripheral nerves. The afferent spinal nerves are responsible for carrying information from the body to the brain and the efferent spinal nerves are responsible for carrying information from the brain to the body. Now within this elaborate system of nerves, neurons, and dendrites, there is a system that regulates the functions of the central nervous system which lie outside its major components such as the brain and the spinal cord. This system is known as the peripheral nervous system and is subdivided into two smaller systems the somatic system, and the autonomic nervous system. The somatic nervous system is responsible for carrying motor and sensory information both to and from the central nervous system. This system is made up of nerves that connect to the skin, sensory organs, and all skeletal muscles. The somatic system is also responsible for nearly all voluntary muscle movements as well as for processing sensory information that arrives via external stimuli including hearing, touch, 
and sight. The structures that allow this communication to happen between the nerves throughout the body and the central nervous system are known as the afferent sensory neurons and the efferent motor neurons. Now afferent simply means conducting inward and efferent means conducting outward. So just like in the spinal nerves, the afferent neurons take information from the nerves to the central nervous system and the efferent neurons take information from the central nervous system to the muscle fibers throughout the body. The autonomic nervous system is further divided into the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is vital to our survival. Have you ever heard of the fight or flight response to danger? The sympathetic nervous system revs up the body when confronted with imminent danger to either defend yourself or to escape the threat. The parasympathetic nervous system is the counterbalance to the sympathetic response to danger, whether real or imagined. Once the threat is gone, the parasympathetic brings all the systems of the body back to normal. Now at this point you should have a basic understanding of the nervous system, but let's do a quick recap. The basic purpose of the nervous system is to coordinate all the activities of the body. It enables the body to respond and adapt to changes that occur both inside and outside the body. The two major parts to the nervous system are the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is also divided into two major structures, the brain and the spinal cord. The brain is found within the skull or cranium and it is made up of six main sections. These six sections are the cerebrum, cerebellum, diencephalon, the midbrain, pons, and the medulla oblongata. The other half of the central nervous system is the spinal cord. And the spinal cord is the link between the brain and the nerves and the rest of your body. The spinal cord is divided into four different regions. The cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and afferent and efferent spinal nerves, which merge to form the peripheral nerves. Now that we know the brain and spinal cord primarily make up the central nervous system, let's look at the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system is essentially the nervous system outside of the brain and spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system is then subdivided into two smaller systems called the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. So, as you can see, the nervous system is quite complex, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. In the video, peripheral nervous system was mentioned. The peripheral nervous system is categorized into two. First is the somatic nervous system, which is in charge of voluntary body movements and transmits sensory message to the central nervous system. And the second is the autonomic nervous system, which is in charge of involuntary body functions like breathing and heartbeat. The autonomic nervous system is further categorized to the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic nervous system is responsible for the fight or flight response, stimulating the body to use energy. Parasympathetic nervous system responsible for rest or digest, which tries to conserve energy. The somatic nervous system also controls involuntary movements called reflexes. A reflexes is an involuntary muscle response to a stimulus. The pathway a reflex takes is called reflex arc. This means the arc just connects to the spinal cord, bypassing the brain so that the reflex arc is not delayed. The pathway is formed stimulus. 2. Sensory neuron. 2. Motor neuron. 2. Reflex muscle movement. Let's do activity 1. Categorize these movements if these are somatic or autonomic.
1. Playing an instrument. Answer. Somatic. 2. Food digestion in the stomach. Answer. Autonomic. 3. Reaching for a book. Answer. Somatic. 4. The pupils dilating. Answer. Autonomic. 5. Walking across the room. Answer. Somatic. 6. Beating of your heart. Answer. Autonomic. 7. Kicking a soccer ball. Answer. Somatic. 8. First term under the sun. Answer. Autonomic. 9. Breathing in and out. Answer. Autonomic. 10. Sweep on the floor. Answer. Somatic. Activity 2. Create a concept map summarizing the nervous system, its functions, and its categorization. This is just an example you may create your own concept map based on your understanding. In order to maintain a stable internal environment, the body has to be provided with what it needs to survive. Like oxygen, nutrients, and waste removal. This means, all the organ systems have to collectively work together to maintain homeostasis. Constantly adjusting to change it. The nervous system. The nervous system is the control of the body for homeostasis. As it is in charge of monitoring, controlling, and regulating all the body part systems. If ever anything inside and outside the body deviates from the norm. Signals are sent through the nervous system. The central nervous system works together with peripheral nervous system to coordinate different body functions to bring back the homeostasis. Endocrine system. This body system regulates the body's activity by secreting hormones. These hormones travel from the endocrine glands through the bloodstream to go directly to the tissues and organs that they are needed. Respiratory system. This system, overseen by the nervous system, does carbon dioxide oxygen gas exchange. This gas exchange happens in the alveoli of the lung. Blood passes through the tiny capillaries in the alveoli, with oxygen and carbon dioxide diffusing in and out of the blood. Gas exchange is important because oxygen is needed for cellular respiration, and carbon dioxide is carried away as waste. Excretory system. Guided by the nervous and endocrine system this system gets rid of waste materials to maintain homeostasis. The kidneys are the main organs for excretion. Filtering system that removes excess water, salts and other substances in the blood. The leftover is now urine, which is then excreted out of the body through urethra. Hormones are also involved with the kidneys. Let's do activity 3. Explain how this body systems help in maintaining homeostasis. 1. Digestive system. The digestive system contributes to homeostasis in body by breaking down food into forms that can be absorbed and used by the body cell. It also maintain the proper pH balance in the gastric environment. Two, skeletal system. Skeletal system helps maintain homeostasis by supporting organs and keeping them in place which allow for proper function. Also skeletal system homeostasis by regulating amount of calcium in the bloodstream. Three, male reproductive system. The reproductive system maintains homeostasis in the male by regulating the overall temperature of the testes. 4. Female Reproductive System The reproductive system helps maintain homeostasis in the female body by regulating the pH level of the vagina. 
5. Circulatory system. The circulatory system maintains homeostasis by transporting nutrients and oxygen towards the body cell, while taking away carbon dioxide and other waste products away from the body cells. As body system works together to maintain homeostasis, feed mechanism, or system that respond to change occurs in the body. When there is a stimulus, or change in the environment, feedback mechanisms respond by increasing or reducing the change to bring system back to normal. Let's do activity 4. Create a chart showing the examples of positive and negative feedback. Activity number 5 That ends our lesson for today. Please don't forget to click on the like button. And subscribe to this channel for more video updates.